Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kenzan Sutakawa Chin. I am the artist who conceived of and produced Gather at the Seattle Asian Art Museum at Volunteer Park. I was asked by the curatorial team to spend a little time talking about some of the inspirations that I had for this very nice piece. And um, I'd like to take the time to do that for you right now. Gather is a piece of LED art. It is uh, approximately 48 feet long by about 25 feet wide. And it is installed into the garden court at the original Seattle Art Museum, the original 1932 Art Deco building. A little bit about myself. Uh, my grandfather was George Sudakawa, who has uh, fountains around the Seattle area as well as throughout the United States and Japan. And one of the main reasons I bring this up in my inspirations is because he would always talk about the idea that fountains were not really complete until the water came on. And the water and the flowing water uh, was an inspiration that he had found in the streams hiking through the Pacific Northwest growing up and little waterfalls. And he had always felt like this was part of the composition. This was always part of the composition of the work, which why I will come back to a little later. I studied textile design and for a while I had an indigo dye bucket, dye vat in my basement in Brooklyn. And this, a lot of this was inspired by this idea that my, during my time in grad school, we were losing a lot of um, fabrication and craft knowledge to computers. And I found a very sympathetic book, which was Tanazaki's In Praise of Shadows, which essentially suggested similar uh, in the 1930s as Japan was rapidly modernizing. He suggested that Japan was losing a lot of the old ways and losing a lot of their aesthetics. That really struck a chord with me. So I've really tried to imbue a lot of the work that I do with some sort of hand fabrication or hand knowledge. Here's some of the other, probably the most famous piece that I've done up to date. This is at the Museum of the City of New York. This is called Starlight. And this was done in conjunction with Cooper Joseph Studio, Chris Cooper, um, who worked there. And this is one of the goals here in my LED work is to really create sculptures where your interaction is mostly with a lit composition. As you can see, we've tried to reduce the mechanical structure of this as much as possible. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using a suspension based structure. Here's some other work that I've done. Um, this was for a gallery show in New York at Owen James Gallery. So I had three main conceptual goals here. And the first one, because this was an Asian art museum uh, and the Seattle Art Museum has a sizable Asian art collection, I thought that I would like to explore Asian textiles uh, because of my own interest in making things by hand and the technologies that people have set up even for very regular work, even before computers. Secondly, I'd like to talk about um, the LEDs that I used for this. And then also thirdly, you know, when I visited over when I was much younger, but then also during a site visit for this project, we realized that there was something to be gained, it seemed like to me, by having a conversation, an artistic conversation with Black Sun by Isamu Noguchi, which sits across the street and in front of the reservoir. Uh, I didn't know what that was gonna be when I first started, but I felt like there was some reason that that should be there and some conversation that should be had. So here we are in the garden court. This is the space 
as it was. Um, looks like the windows are clear, so that means that this was taken after the renovation was complete, although obviously right before my work went in. And it's a very rectilinear room, and uh, the color, it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of this tan color. Now, speaking about weaving and textiles, I've always been really interested in this process called ECAT and this cross pattern. If you don't know, ECAT is the process of dyeing the thread, dyeing the thread before it's actually placed on the loom in a repetitive or rhythmic way. And so when it's threaded onto the loom, that means that it's actually forming patterns based on where the yarn or the thread was and was not dyed. For some reason, I really had this cross pattern stuck in my head. So I talked to my fabrication team. He suggested that we could probably get some sort of interesting composition using this, which is called a COB. It's called chip on board. Most LEDs um, that we use are more of a square package. As you can see, that little square inside that triangle, that's a single LED. And it's got a little bit of photoreactive resin on top. That's the yellow part. And in a COB, which you see below, which is lit, you have all these LED chips underneath a single big, uh, let's say, glob of resin, which is spread across the whole thing. And it makes this kind of single large lit element. So if you think back, we were looking at crosses and kind of these double stroke crosses, otherwise known as hashtags. And we came up with a system where we printed using SLS nylon, and SLS stands for stereo laser sinter, which means that this is powdered nylon fused together with itself using a series of lasers, two lasers converging. And we were able to design this object. Now, one of the things about uh, that cross pattern, whether it's in ECAT or uh, embroidery, which is called sashiko, is it is generally a white cross on a dark background. And I wanted to try and figure out how that was going to happen, especially as you know, the garden court has plenty of light shining down through the clear story, and we needed to be able to stand up to sunlight. So here we are. Uh, this is the first test in our workshop. This is actually up in Portland, Maine. And the wires you see suspending this are lit. Uh, sorry, they are electrified, as you might be able to see in those uh, alligator clips on the lower right. And OK, this was putting off a lot of light. And what we ended up trying to do was I thought to myself, can we actually make something where it looks like this is a cross on a dark background. And of course, if we make it darker, the photo darker, we get this, which I thought would stand up to a relatively large amount of light because we're actually looking at light, not looking at cast light. So here we are. There's a cross pattern. This is a slightly different version. There's an offset. And um, you know, I thought to myself, fabric, fabric, fabric hanging from the ceiling. What do we think about that? Could we get this to end up looking like a piece of fabric? Uh, so let's just remind ourselves what that looks like. I Googled it here. What did I Google? Ceiling draped fabric. And of course, this is what you get. So we're looking for something that looks, um, well, physically like this, but thematically, not not at all. It's not, not, not this kind of white wedding look. Um, OK, so we're trying to hang stuff from the ceiling. And of course, then I wanted to have a conversation with this piece. This is Black Sun by Isamu Noguchi. And of course, everyone who takes a picture of this can remember that you can get the space needle in the background. And this axis um, actually was really important to me. It felt like this was some sort of energy collection or energy shooting or beam of energy or, you know, this is kind of metaphysical energy or, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, thinking about 
just emotional energy, all this type of stuff. And I wanted to try and get this axis, right? So let's look at the axis on the map. Here it is. And it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Like if you look at the um, the reservoir there, the museum is oriented directly uh, on axis with that reservoir. And, you know, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. If we zoom in, um, it's not quite perfect. Remember, this is not directly overhead. The satellite is kind of slightly off center. And of course, Noguchi, being the artist that he is, uh, chose not to place Black Sun directly on axis with the building, which is probably a good choice for him. So we did not actually end up finding a mathematical axis from the center of the museum straight towards the Space Needle, but I would say thematically we were very successful at that. And I'll explain why here in a moment. Now, when I think about fabric hanging down from the ceiling, let's get back into the space here. Here it is. This is in Rhino. It's a CAD program. And this is the full scale in Rhino, the space itself. And I made the colors kind of similar to that green stone on the bottom and then this very tan homogenous color on the walls. Obviously, the front and the right side are clear so that we can see what's going on. The curators and the museum staff and the facilities team at the museum suggested that I take up this space for the space that would be the bounding box for the work itself. So we're talking about 10 feet tall. It's about 12, no, sorry, let's look 25 feet, 25, 10. And then as I see right there, it says 48 feet, eight inches long. So, you know, this gives us a margin of, let's say, 10 feet from the walls and about uh, 14, 15 feet from the ground. So um, I wrestled with this. I thought, about, I thought about fabric hanging from the ceiling, as you saw. And one thing that I really did not like felt a little bit symmetric. So as we were moving things around, I said, well, if we're going to mount this from the ceiling, we're mounting this in kind of, uh, let's say, channels. Uh, we use Unistrut, if you know what that is. It's a pretty uh, basic building material for supporting a variety of things. You could do uh, electrical boxes or pipes or plumbing or whatever. And I realized um, that we could make something that was actually funneling towards the front. I went to industrial design school and one of the things that we would always think about is trying to minimize, let's say, sorry, let's minimize the design for the quantity that we're outputting. So the goal here was to make as many of the same units as possible and that nests together. So for instance, in the original design, there was 450 double crosses and I made, or I made this to design that each of the strands hanging from left to right would be exactly the same length. So in the back, the distance between the hanging points is a little bit further away and they converge in the front. And you know, as you bring the two hanging points together, the bottom starts to dip. So we started to get the kind of a more interesting shape than just kind of two parallel lines as we saw in the Google search, image search. Switch you out here. This is the as built. There were some things in the way in the ceiling. And you know, whenever you get on site, you always kind of have to adjust for things that you are not able to immediately plan for. Um, so it's a little bit wider than originally planned, which is fine. The front scoop is a little bit more gentle than originally planned. And on each of these strands, there's only 13, not 15 double crosses on there. But it gets the same idea across. And I think it provided a very nice, uh, delicate shape. So let me show you this in orthographic view. Here we are. As you can see, top view on the upper left, we're looking um, towards the front of the building is at the bottom. and then. If we look at the right view in the lower 
right hand, the front of the building is on the left side. Now, one of the things that I really started to think about as I was thinking about fabric and basketry, also I love baskets um, and the way that we make them, is that this was kind of a collector. It was kind of a collection point. And as I was imagining this with the Noguchi piece, I thought, you know, it's really important to think about how this is a clear story and we are collecting all this work and all of these, let's say, kind of, it's kind of conceptual collection of cosmic particles or rays or waves or whatever it is, you know, like there's all these things falling through the clear story and hitting this surface, this kind of virtual surface. And I imagine that in kind of a hydro form way, a kind of a water way, kind of a water falling in here and it's collecting and it's kind of tumbling out the front, similar to uh, those pieces that, those fountains that I showed you that my grandfather did. Uh, one of the things that has always struck me that someone told me and reminded me of once is that even during the daytime, we are always being hit by light from distant stars. And I just thought to myself, well, here is this object, this collector, that is essentially collecting light from distant stars, and we are um, kind of funneling it forward into the Noguchi, Noguchi piece, and it is kind of shooting it and uh, focusing it directly at the Space Needle. I thought that was a very Seattle theme. So I wanna show you the, uh, let's see, let's look at this piece. This is directly from, I guess, where the water or the particles would be flowing out of. Uh, obviously we're still in progress here. And, um, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I ultimately named it Gather because this was one of the names or definitions of Gather was to gather these particles in this kind of basket or fabric shape, um, kind of all this stuff falling. And then of course, from a fabric perspective, when you squeeze these two pieces, two edges together, it is starting to gather, uh, make a small gather, kind of like a pleat. And then thirdly, of course, this is a major event space that's very special to Seattle. And of course we want to gather underneath it. So uh, here's another photo. This is one that not many people will see. You have to be in a lift uh, to take this photo. And that's it. I hope that this was informative. I hope that you get to see this. You know, of course, I'm filming this during coronavirus time. So hopefully when we all come out of self-isolation, many of you will get to see this and perhaps you will get a moment to think about these inspirations as you view it. I look forward to hearing your comments if you have any. Please feel free to reach out to me and my company, uh, studio1000.com, and if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, you can follow us at studio1000. Uh, have a great day, thank you so much.